Hey Cosmos, welcome back to chapter 20, part two of this chapter. Like I said in part one, this is a fairly long chapter, so this will be the second part of the chemical texture services chapter. Our objective for today, you will be able to explain the four chemical reactions that take place during the permanent waving process. You will be able to explain the differences between an alkaline wave, a true acid wave, and the purpose of neutralizing neutralization in permanent waving, as well as being able to perform the safe and effective perm techniques, describe how thiol relaxers straighten the hair, how hydroxide relaxers straighten hair, and how to demonstrate safe and effective hydroxide relaxing techniques. Lastly, you'll be able to describe curl reforming and how it restructures the hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump to slide 46. So we can get started, which is our chemical hair relaxer section. A chemical hair relaxer is the process of rearranging the basic structure of extremely curly hair into a straighter form, straighter or smoother form. Let me say that one more time. Chemical hair relaxing is the process of rearranging the basic structure of extremely curly hair into a straighter or smoother form. The different types of chemical hair relaxers we have ammonia thio, guanidine hydroxide, and we have sodium hydroxide. With the extremely curly hair, the hair grows in long and twisted spiral curls. The curl sections are highly elliptical and they vary in shape and thickness along the lengths of the hair. The thinnest and weakest sections are located at twists, so in between the twists. The twist, those, that's where the thinnest and weakest sections are located when it comes to curly hair. And in the, the twist, those are that are bent, they're extremely, there's an extremely sharp angle. And it when you're relaxing the hair, you're stretching it out. Thio relaxers, they use the same ATG, ammonia, ammonium thioglycolate that is also used in your permanent waving like we talked about in part one of this chapter, but it's at a higher concentration and at a higher pH level, which is, by, which is at about a 10. Your thio relaxers, they are thicker and they have a higher viscosity, which is also, which also means the measurement of the thickness or thin thinness of a liquid that affects how the fluid flows, making it more suitable for an application as a relaxer. Your thio relaxers, they break down disulfide bonds and so soften the hair. So with your thio relaxers, it's the same application steps that you would use for the hydroxide relaxers. But with the thiol relaxers, your neutralization process is a bit different. So with the oxide oxide oxidation reaction that is caused by the neutralizer in your thiol neutralization, relaxers, 
in your sorry in your thio relaxers it rebuilds the disulfide bond, bonds that were broken by the thio relaxer so as you're also testing like you would test hair for any chemical service you're going to do the same thing when you have a thio relaxer you want to Test the hair for elasticity and porosity on several areas of the head to make sure that it's safe and the hair is stable enough to receive this process service. If the hair has a poor elasticity, you do not want to perform the relaxer service. You also do not want to forget to perform an analysis of the client's hair and scalp before you perform the relaxer service on this client. Japanese thermal straighteners, which are sometimes called thermal reconditioning or TR, they, they combine the use of thyla relaxers with flat ironing. Each product or each manufacturer that creates a Japanese thermal straightening, it's slightly different procedures that go along with each one of them. So you want to make sure to follow the manufacturing instruction, instructions when you're doing a Japanese thermal straightener. So let's just go over like the steps on how you will go about doing a Japanese thermal straightener. You want to shampoo, you want to make sure the hair is shampooed and conditioned before you start the process. You want to distribute the straightener evenly throughout the hair. After you do that, the hair will be processed to the desired curl reduction. And then you have to rinse the hair for about 10 minutes. And you want to make sure it's conditioned and blow drying completely before moving to the next step, which is your flat ironing step. You wanna flat iron each section. With the flat iron, you're giving that extra heat and the pressing makes the Japanese straightener work more effectively than a standard thyle relaxer. Then once you do that, your hair is then neutralized and blown dry again. This service does take a long time and it's sometimes it's not appropriate for clients who have like really curly hair or color treated hair. And with the Japanese thermal straighteners, some manufacturers, they want to be certified before you can give this service. So if you're gonna offer this service, make sure that to find out if you need to have a certification or if you don't need to have a certification. So with your hydroxide relaxers, your the hydroxide ion is the active ingredient in those relaxers. They're very strong with the pH over 13. So it makes them very alkaline. Some examples of what a hydroxide relaxer are, you have your sodium, sodium hydroxide, your potassium hydroxide, your lithium hydroxide, your guanidine hydroxide. It's not compatible with thyro relaxers. And then you also have your lanthionization. Lanthionization. These words get you every time. Lanthionization, which is the process by which the hydroxide relaxers permanently straighten the hair. The relaxers also remove a sulfur atom from a disulfide bond and converts it into a lanthionine bond. So with the hydroxide relaxers, we have your metal hydroxide relaxers. They're iconic compounds formed by a metal such as sodium, which is Na, potassium, which is K, or lithium, which is Li, that is combined with oxygen, which is your O, on your periodic table, sign, 
scientific periodic table. I believe that's what it's called. Um, and hydrogen, which is H. Metal hydroxide relaxers include sodium hydroxide, NaOH, potassium hydroxide, KOH, and lithium hydroxide, LiOH. And the active ingredient in hydroxide relaxers is your hydroxide ion. So you want to always remember that what the active ingredient is in these relaxers. Sometimes you can, there can be calcium hydroxide added to hydroxide relaxers, but it's never used by itself to relax hair. Then we have lye-based relaxers, which are your sodium hydroxide relaxers, also known as caustic soda. It's one of the most it's one of the most common and the oldest types of relaxers that are out there and what is mainly used today. Some chemicals are used in drain cleaners and chemical hair defibrillators. Defibrillator, uh, defibrillatories. I can't say words today, but it's okay. We're gonna get through this together. And then we have no lie relaxers. I always say when the relaxer says it has no lie, it's a lie. This is a little funny joke that I was told when I was in beauty school and I've taken it and ran with it. But a no lie relaxer, relaxer it's lithium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide, which is often sold as a no mix or no lie relaxers. Even though it does not lie, chemistry identical and little differences in their performances. There's hardly no difference in between the two when it comes to your no light relaxers. They do straighten the hair completely and they do offer less scalp ir irritation than any other hydroxide relaxer. So this will be good for someone who may have a really sensitive scalp, um, can get irritated easily. This might be a good option because it does still straighten the client's hair. And lastly, we have our guanidine hydroxide relaxers, which are also sold as your no light relaxers. The hydroxide ion is the active ingredient in the guanidine hydroxide relaxers. With these relaxers, it requires two components to be mixed with it for it to work efficiently. It does straighten the hair completely, even though it does say no light, it's, it's sold as a no light relaxer, but it also will provide a lot less irritation on your scalp for anybody who has a sensitive scalp. It does not help reduce hair damage, so don't think that because it says no lie that it will help reduce hair damage. It won't. It's still a relaxer. And it's also more drying to the client's hair. So you want to keep those things in mind when you're using, if you're going to use a guanidine hydroxide relaxer. Then let's get into our low pH relaxer. Your low pH relaxer contains ammonium sulfite and ammonium bisulfite, which is most commonly used in this type of relaxer. It's not compatible with thio and it's not compatible with hydroxide. It does not completely straighten extremely curly hair. So be mindful of that if you're using a low pH relaxer, but it can be used on a client who has color treated hair if their hair is damaged or if they have fine hair. So if you have those clients who are always wanting color in their hair, but they have a relaxer, you can give them a relaxer. You can color their hair as long as you're using a low pH relaxer or the other way around. If you know that this is a first time client and they're gonna wanna, they're gonna want color or something, later on down the line, if you're giving them a relaxer, you do want to use a low pH relaxer, but you also want to keep in mind that it will not straighten their hair completely. So just keep that in mind when you're using a low pH relaxer. And 
And then we have our base and no base. This is what you're gonna use before you start your relaxer service. The base helps to protect your client's skin and scalp during the relaxing process. It can be a cream. Um, it can be something like Vaseline. Um, they have one for sensitive scalps. They have a base cream for sensitive scalp or protective cream or protective base, whichever one you want to use. It's an oil cream that provides a protective barrier between the scalp and the relaxer, just in case you get relaxer on the client's scalp. It will help prevent against burns. Um, and any chemical damage that can potentially happen to your client's skin or scalp. Then you have your no base relaxers, which you don't have to use a protective base cream since it already comes in it and it melts at body temperature. But you can pr apply protective cream to the client's ears and hairline if you choose to. That's your option. Um, for me, I'm more of a I'm going to protect you all the time type of stylist. So even if I'm using a relaxer that doesn't require me to put a base, I'm still going to put a base just in case because it is a relaxer. It is a chemical. I want to make sure that client's scalp is extra protected. It's not going to do no harm to what you're doing if it already has the base included in the relaxer. And then when you, with relaxers, you have different relaxer strengths. Oh, come on, fingers. We have mild, which is for fine hair, color-treated hair, or damaged hair. You have your regular, which is for normal hair texture or like a medium curly client. And then you have your super relaxers, which is the strongest relaxer out there, which you can use on extremely curly hair or coarse hair. If you don't know, you want to do a strand test before you do the application for any client. If you don't know what type of hair they have and what type of relaxer you're going to use. So just make sure to always do a test strand. And then you have your testing period throughout the relax, relaxer process application. With the um, periodic strand testing, the processing time, it does vary from client to client, but you want to make sure the hair is relaxed all the way before you're rinsing it off. You wanna stretch the strand to determine if the curls are removed or you may smooth and press the strand to the scalp. You can use your fingers to smooth it out. Um, you can stretch it to see if it doesn't, if it bounces back and needs some more processing time. There are different ways to go about um, stretching the hair strand to make sure that the curls are removed or if you need to add more processing time. If the strand remains straight or smooth, it is sufficiently relaxed. The relaxing process can be done. But if it does, the curl does return, you need to continue processing. And just keep an eye on it. Every um, relaxer instru um, and the instructions on the box has a different range of processing times for each one. So just double check it before you use it. So you're, you at least have a goal or a mindset of time frame that you're going to be using or working in between. Your hydroxide neutralization is an acid alkali neutralization that neutralizes, which deactivates, the alkaline residues left in the hair by a hydroxide relaxer. And it also lowers the pH and the scalp. With the hydroxide relaxer neutralization, it doesn't involve oxidation, oxid oxidation or rebuilding of the dust off by bonds. The hair does remain at a high pH and you should use an acid balanced shampoo or normalizing lotion when you're doing a hydrox, when you're doing performing hydroxide neutralization. Your hydroxide relaxer can be used for any virgin application, a retouch application, a texturizing service. You can use your hydroxide relaxer. When you are doing or using a hydroxide relaxer, 
you want to use a base cream or a protective cream, and you want to use normalizing products as well as a neutralizing shampoo. When it comes to your normalizing products, you have some normalizing lotions, which are conditioners with an acidic pH that will help restore the hair pH before the final neutralizing shampoo. So that's what it means by your normalizing products, your normalizing lotions. It will help restore that pH back to where it needs to be. When it comes to relaxers, all of them must include a neutralizing shampoo that must be used after you're rinsing the relaxer out of the client's hair. With some of them, they may produce a color when you're rinsing it out that turns pink. And that means that there's some re a relaxer residue left in the client's hair. But when it rinses and it's all white, that means the relaxer is all rinsed out. So you want to make sure to rinse, 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 like overly rinse. If you think you haven't rinsed enough, if you think you've rinsed too much, rinse a little bit more. You want it to be white once you're, you want that residue or that product to be white, not pink. Just like we talked about in part one with the permanent safety precautions, we have relaxer safety precautions. I'm gonna go through them. Um, you can write them down um, later on once you get done on your own to kind of memorize them in your own words, or I'll leave it up for maybe a minute after I get done reading each slide for them and you could take a screenshot of them, whichever one works for you. But with your relaxer safety precautions, you wanna do a thorough hair analysis and consultation on that client. A consultation is standard. A consultation is something that you can't avoid, something you can't get around, you have to do one, period. Do a consultation in the hair analysis every time, especially when you're doing a chemical. You wanna examine the scalp for abrasions and you wanna keep accurate and detailed client records. This is, comes into play with your client cards. Write down every detail that you can, what's gonna be significant to know about that client for future references. You wanna keep an, a client record for each client. You also wanna have your client sign a release statement. This is a chemical release form that you will have your client sign when you're doing any type of chemical, whether it's a relaxer or a perm or a hair color or Brazilian blowout or um, a hair straightener or smoother or keratin treatment. You want them to sign a chemical release form to release, to release, how can I say this? So your chemical release form, it lets the client know and yourself know that the client is aware about what's going on the client is aware they are getting a chemical and the, a chemical on their head, scalp can potentially cause damage. They know all that's what's in your chemical release form. And they're signing that like a waiver. You do not apply hydroxide over thio. Don't. Just, just don't do it. <laughs> You're going to destroy that client's hair and you do not apply thio over hydroxide. You will royally destroy that client's hair. Do not relax hair treated with metallic dye. So if your client has been using home color from Walmart, Target, um, Amazon, uh, third party website they, they, that they have color, color from, do not give them relax, a relaxer because those metallic dyes can cause a chemical reaction in the client's hair that you do not want to see or experience. And do not relax overly damaged hair. Get that hair back to healthy standards before you put a client's, before you put a client through a hair relax, relaxation process or a chemical service of any type. Get that hair back to healthy standards.
you don't shampoo the hair prior to a hydroxide relaxer and you want to make sure the hair and scalp are dry before you apply the relaxer. You also want to apply protective base cream to the client's scalp, hairline, and ears and wear gloves. Always wear gloves. A relaxer is a very strong, strong, strong chemical. I have seen it eat through a lot of things. <laughs> I've seen it. I've had a coworker who said she's seen it eat through a metal, um, a comb that had uh, metal on it. I've never seen that before, but she says she has, and that scared her for life, and she never did it. So just be careful when you're working with uh, relaxers and always wear gloves. You want to protect your client's eyes, so you can have them wear like glasses, like you can buy glasses for your client to wear, or you can have them put a towel over um, their eyes without covering their nose so that their eyes are protected. If the solution does touch the eyes, you want to flush the eyes. And you do not allow the product to touch the ears, scalp, or skin, hence why you're going to use a protective cream or protective base for that client. You want to perform periodic strand tests. You want to avoid scratching the scalp. Please inform your client when they call to book an appointment for a relaxer not to scratch their scalp because it just makes their scalp more irritated and it can cause a, a chemical burn. You don't overlap. You do not overlap the relaxer on the hair strand. You wanna apply relaxer once and keep it moving. You wanna adjust strength for fine damaged hair and you don't want to remove more than 80% of the curl. You want to thoroughly rinse, the, re, thoroughly rinse the relaxer from the hair, and you want to use a normalizing lotion. After you do your normalizing lotion, you want to use neutralizing shampoo with color indicator that conform restored pH. What that means is you want to use the neutralizing shampoo that will let you know if you still have relaxer still in the hair. So when you're using your neutralizing shampoo and the suds turn pink, you still have relaxer in the hair. If you're using neutralizing shampoo and the suds are white, the relaxer is all gone out of the client's hair. After you've done that, you want to use conditioner and a wide tooth comb to eliminate excess, excessive stretching when combing tangles. Do not use hot irons or excessive heat on chemically relaxed hair. If you do decide to use a flat iron, use it on low heat. The hair is already straight. There's really no need for you to overly do it with the, the flat iron. Just use it on a low heat if the client requests it or if you need to bump the ends or add a curl to the client's hair, just be careful and always use a heat protectant, always. And now let's get into our keratin straightening treatment. For keratin straightening treatment, they contain silicone polymers and formalin, which release formaldehyde gas when they are heated to high temperatures. So you want to be careful when you're doing that, especially with working with keratin. That's why a lot of people don't use them that much anymore because they do release that when it's hot, when it's really hot. So with the keratin straightening treatments, you don't want to confuse those treatments with the keratin conditioning treatments because keratin by itself, it will not straighten anyone's hair. So the way that it, keratin works, keratin straightening treatments work, they work by fixing the keratin that's in place in a semi-permanent manner, but they do not break bonds down. Once you have applied the treatment, you will then blow dry the hair and flat iron, which will be set at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And you wanna use narrow sections. 
to polymerize, polymerize a coating on the hair. You'll eliminate up to 95% of frizz and curl. And with the keratin straightening treatments, it lasts for three to five months, which is a good, decent amount of time for what it's going to do for that client. It's going to take out that curl, a good amount of that curl. So you want to make sure the client's going to get the wear that they're looking for out of that service. So with the keratin, you will recommend that the client wait at least 72 hours after they get this treatment before taking a shower. So tell your client to take a shower before they come because they're going to have to wait 72 hours to take another shower. And that is with for a certain reason. Because the steam and the heat from the shower can accelerate the release of the vapors. And you don't want that to happen. So some steps to performing your keratin straightening. You want to do a consultation. Always do a consultation. You want to make sure you're clear on the client's history that they've been going through throughout their life when it comes to this keratin straightening treatment. And if they are, have any other chemicals that have been put on their hair, you wanna know that as well and what products they use. You wanna pre, you wanna also keep in mind of the preconditioning, which will equalize your, the porosity in the client's hair. And in that 72 hour time period, you wanna make sure your client wears their hair down and not to use hairpins, ponytails, clips, or either sunglasses to hold their hair back. It has to be in a straight position for 72 hours so that it can ma maintain that straightness for the three to five months that it's supposed to last for. So when it comes to clients who have permanent color or highlights and they wanna get a keratin straightening treatment, you wanna use a mild, have the client use a mild to regular shampoo. And you wanna also follow the manufacturer's instructions when they're using the clarifying shampoo before you apply that treatment to that client. If your client has 70% or more highlights, do not use clarifying anything on their hair. So if your client wants a demi-gloss treatment or a toner, you have to perform that service three to five days after you do the keratin treatment. And that will help to avoid wetting the newly straightened hair. Curl reforming, it doesn't straighten the hair. It just makes the curls that are already there larger and looser. You have a soft curl permanent, which is a thio-based chemical service that reformats curly and wavy hair into looser and larger curls and waves. The reformation occurs by wrapping the hair on the rods. The soft cur curl permanents they do use your ATG, your ammonium thi thioglycolate and oxidi oxidation. Why can't I say that word today? Oxidation neutralizers just as your thio permanent waves do. And just like with any other of the two 
permanents and the relaxers, your curl reaffirming also has safety precautions as well, especially with your hair relaxing. You wanna perform a thorough hair analysis and do a client consultation prior to the service. You wanna examine the scalp for any abrasions. You wanna keep accurate and detailed client records of the services performed and the results achieved. You wanna have the client sign a release statement that indicates he or she understands the possible risks related to that particular service. And you do not apply a hydroxide relax relaxer on hair that has been previously treated with a thiol relaxer. You do not apply a thiol relaxer or soft curl perm on hair that has been previously treated with the hydroxide relaxer. Do not, chemi do not chemi chemically relax hair that has been treated with a metallic dye. You mix those two together, you're, you don't know what chemical re reaction will happen if you're mixing those two together. It's not gonna be good. I've seen some people, it's smoke and that is terrifying. Do not relax overly damaged hair which is a given, a given, you're just gonna damage it even more or potentially just break the client's hair off and they're gonna have to get a really bad, a really big job. You do not shampoo the client prior to the application of a hydroxide relaxer and the client's hair and scalp must be completely dry and free from perspiration prior to the application of a hydroxide relaxer. So the client's hair and scalp must be 100% dry before you do a hydroxide relaxer. You wanna apply a protective face cream to avoid scalp irritation or burns. You wanna wear gloves during the relaxer application. If any solution accidentally gets into your client's eyes, you wanna flush the eye immediately with cool water and refer the client to a doctor. Stop the service. If you have relaxer in the hair, rinse it out um, as fast as you can. Also like flushing out the eye and then tell the client to go see a doctor to make sure they don't have any further damage to their eyes. Do not allow chemical relaxers to accidentally come into contact with the client's ears, scalp, or skin. This is why you will use a protective base cream to protect them. You want to perform periodic strand tests during the service to monitor the pace of the curl removal. Avoid scratching the scalp with your comb or fingernails. Please make your client aware of those two things so that it helps not irritate their scalp or make their scalp more sensitive before you apply the relaxer. And when performing a hair relaxer service, be sure not to overlap onto previously relaxed hair. Apply to a new, apply to new growth only. The only way that you would apply from roots to end is if you're doing a virgin application. And with your virgin application, you would apply it to your mid shaft to ends first, and then you'll go back through and then you'll apply it from the roots to where the starting point of the relaxer you apply to the mid shaft starts. If you're doing a re uh, relaxer retouch, you will apply it to the new growth only. If you overlap relaxer, you can damage the hair even more, potentially breaking it off. Thoroughly rinse the chemical relaxer from the hair. You wanna follow the manufacturer's instructions closely when applying a chemical relaxer. Use a neutralizing shampoo to guarantee that the hair and scalp have been restored to their normal pH. You want to make sure you're doing that. I overly shampoo and I overly rinse because I want to make sure I get everything out and I want to make sure that hair pH has gotten back to normal. A client may think that you're washing hair too much, but I'd rather be safe than sorry and have that client come back to me saying that their hair is broken off here because or they have a scalp burn because that they have relaxer still left in their hair and their scalp. We're not having none of that and I'm not want to deal with any of that. So overly rinse, overly shampoo, which neutralize your shampoo to make sure that you are good to go at the end of the day. And that is the end of chapter 20, part two, your chemical texture services chapter in your book. Here's our summary review. You want products which are used to relax overly curly hair are formulated with sodium hydroxide and ammonium thioglycolate, which is your thio, or acid-based relaxers. 
Thorough hair and scalp examination and evaluation is critical prior to giving any type of chemical service, including chemical relaxers. You must place the client's safety first and foremost. That is a given. Your client's safety comes first, just like your safety comes first. You want to make sure everyone's protected. In addition, thorough analysis will aid you in determining which type of product and what strength of product to use on the client's hair. Chemical relaxing can be done routinely and safely as long as the stylist is careful to follow prescribed procedures and the manufacturer's direct directions and performs frequent test curls during the service to prevent overprocessing. Always, 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 always try to prevent overprocessing. If you guys can do that, you will be good to go. So now that we completed both part one and part two, read the rest of the chapter for your homework and do your final exam today, or go ahead and tackle that final exam today for this chapter. And also for your homework, I want you to record yourself applying base cream or protective cream to a mannequin scalp or a human scalp, a model, the hairline and around their ears. So you will also be required to correctly drape the client for this chemical service. So do a chemical draping and you'll also perform a consultation and write, write it down as you're going along for a virgin relaxer service. I want you to record yourself doing that, attach it with your verification questions at the end um, of this and send it in and I can't wait to see what y'all come up with hope y'all have a good day bye